God bless Texas, the Texas Motorplex, the NHRA Fall Nationals. It was big. Monday Morning Racer was there, and this is the NHRA Fall Nationals in review next. <laughs> The NHRA Fall Nationals at the Texas Motorplex was big. Definitely a Texas-sized NHRA event. Had great energy there. There was even a flyover again. Driver introductions before the race happened again. It felt like an actual national event at this race at the Motorplex. And the Motorplex, the great facility that it is, the house that Billy built, it lived up to its history in this event with high speeds and low ETs. For my throttle whack though, the top story of the event, I want to follow the particular story of one funny car driver, and that is Alexis DeJoria. As if Alexis wasn't cool enough already, her and the team's doing the whack. So glad you got teams like hers and the Palmers and the Leverages. They're bringing it back for us NHRA Nitro Methane fans. I think she is the top story, though, from the NHRA Fall Nationals. She comes from the Midwest Nationals after making the highlight reel with a massive engine explosion that turned that funny car body into carbon fiber confetti. And she makes the highlight reel once again here at the Fall Nationals for a burn down of a funny car fire. But it doesn't start there, ladies and gentlemen. No, Q1, you probably hadn't heard this from the national broadcast, but they were thrashing to get that car ready for Q1, in fact. They turned the car on for the warm-up, and it did not sound right at all. It was not breathing right as a nitro-methane-burning funny car. It sounded more like an alcohol funny car. They cut it off. They go thrashing on the car. Apparently, a burst panel needed to be replaced. Place it, crank the car up, give it the whack, they're ready for Q1. That Q1 session, though, was not a good session for them. Alexis ran a 733 at 94 miles per hour, definitely needing to find more, but the team found more for Q2 when 
they qualified fifth on the board at a 389 325 miles per hour. So going into race day, Sunday eliminations, definitely Alexis was poised to do well. She gets her round one win, but as you can see in the footage, she begins to drift toward the wall. I imagine there's already fire in the cockpit. I imagine it's already dark and she's not sure where she's going. She thinks she's still going straight, but it veers toward the wall and it bursts into flames and the car continues to burn and it continues to roll. In fact, Alexis has the hatch open. She's riding on top of the car and she finds an NHRA safety safari member and as she describes, she just jumps off into that NHRA Safety Safari's arms and she is safe and secure from the fire. A fire that, frankly, we don't see these that often anymore in NHRA nitromethane funny car racing. This is a scene out of the 80s and the 70s, a big fireball like this and it rolling and still burning down. Later on, I went by and looked at the body. Her pit was actually right next to the Justin Ashley pit, and I took a few photos of the body. It was completely destroyed. No repairing this thing. It is going to the trash heap or laying off in a corner for a memento of remember when at the Fall Nationals. The chassis was no better. I'm sure the chassis can be repaired and brought back to life, but everything was gone. In fact, I remember one fan wanting a piece of the funny car itself that was burned down and Alexis goes and picks up the blower belt that had just crumbled into this mash of rubber and Kevlar and it just, oh, it was terrible. And she's, she picks it up and she's like, ew, and she hands it to the fan and she has to wash her hands later. It was total destruction. But Alexis, to her credit, and this is where I think really it's the big story. It's not so much the thrash of Q1. It's not so much the fire. It is she and the racer that she is. And if you think she is an individual that's just got a bunch of money and she's just out there for the cool factor of it, she wants to race. She gets back in the backup car, goes out there for round two. Yes, she lost round two, but folks, she got back into a nitromethane NHRA funny car after the biggest fire that I'm sure we've all seen in who knows when. Alexis DeJoria, kudos to you, and that's just doggone cool that you got back in that funny car. points of interest that I want to point out to you. Two rookies in NHRA Top Fuel competition. Joey Haas, he was in the Terry Totten Motorsports Top Fueler and he entered in for only his second race ever. He qualified once again. He qualified for his first race which was the U.S. Nationals. Does so right here for the Fall Nationals and has a good weekend posting his best ever elapsed time and mile per hour. Let's hear from Joey right now. Monday Morning Racer here at the Fall Nationals. Caught up with Joey Haas in the Terry Totten Motorsports Top Fuel Dragster. So, Joey, look, man, you had an interesting Q1. Already had the plan to shut off at half track. Why was that with the car this weekend? Well, we're just a lower budget team. I mean, we uh, had a fresh block in the car. Terry put a fresh crank in the car. So we just wanted, I mean, money's you know, tight. So we didn't want to smoke the bearings in it, go out there, make a little squirt on it, get in the show, get a good shakedown run, come back, tear it apart, look at the bearings, look at everything, make sure it's good, and then come out today swinging. So, and that's what we did. You know, the car's obviously consistent. It runs 390s, 393, 301. I kept them honest. I treated him a little bit. I was 051, which is by far my best in the fuel car, but we was, we're ready to get after it. You definitely were ready to get after it. You did that, probably the best run in this car for Terry Totten Motorsports, over 300 miles per hour. Talk to me, man, P about a, a little bit of a pile wheelie out there. Yeah, we sat there at the line a little longer than we normally do, waiting for the other car to fire up. Uh, 
but it just, you know, a little light in the front end, but when you hit the gas, it comes up, and uh, you just ride it out as long as you can. It was going straight, so it was going good, and just hang with it, and the clutch starts to come in, and starts to push your chin down, and you just, you're on, on a good run at that point, and uh, got out at the other end, seeing it was 301 with Tony there, and it was just uh, obviously memorable. You know, you, you think your whole life, it's just every man's dream, you know. It, uh, a lot of people takes to get here, but it's, uh, it's rewarding. Definitely rewarding. You're living the dream, but you got folks helping you do that. So talk to me about, about the partners on the car this weekend. Well, we got Chip with uh, strutmasters.com. John Hale, best of Texas barbecue sauce. He's here local. I've known him for a long time, nostalgia racing. Uh, he's just watched me grow. If I had any questions, he was there to answer them, driving, tuning, anything, crewing. Um, the Barnett Murphy Farm is our own personal business that me and my wife Elizabeth own in Nashville, Tennessee, just northwest in Pleasant View. So it, it's, a, it's a big group that comes together, and Terry and the guys at home, you know, they put a lot of hours into the shop making these cars go, and it just makes me look good because there's so many people behind me. We've got new guys that are in the pit that have never even crewed on a car this weekend. Cord Christensen, he's here local. He's my uncle, Dwayne's good buddy. So he came over, he's a diesel mechanic, just fell in like a natural. Uh, we've got our normal guys, Joe Pryor. He's been with me since I was checking tire pressure when I was could hardly reach it. Uh, my dad's here this weekend. You know, like I said, Terry just puts a lot of work into this place. My mom traveled from Illinois. It just, it takes everybody. You know, this is 100% volunteer and it makes me look good, but it's because of them that the car went 301 miles an hour. Well, folks, he's out here looking good. The car's performing well, and definitely I'm looking forward to what Terry Totten Motorsports has in store as we look on to 2021. Joey, thank you. I appreciate it. Appreciate everything you do. Monday Morning Racer, Fall Nationals, Texas Motorplex. You're looking at the one and only Justin Ashley. Justin, let's talk about qualifying. Man, what a blast. Q1, best pass for you of your career so far. Talk to me about your hot rod in Q1. Yeah, that was awesome. It was really important, especially now with only two set, two sessions instead of the usual four, to be able to come out here and run well during the first session. And the conditions here in Dallas were so good and so effective and so conducive to high performance. And, uh, you know, our team, our Davis Motorsports team and Aaron Brooks and the Strummasters.com dragster were able to take advantage of that. So we went a career best 368, which at the time put us number one and we finished off qualifying number two. But just a real confidence builder and an awesome run for our team. Awesome run for your team, but a story of a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde type of scenario, cause Q2 was a little hot in the car for you. I'm curious though, with that run, engine explosion, being in the capsule, do you really notice any of that? Or is it just hop out and go like, oh wow. Yeah, so that's a great question. I think that, first of all, this sport will humble you really quick. You'll go from being top qualifier to blowing your stuff up the next run, so. Uh, with that being said, you know, you definitely feel something's a little bit off when you're going at the time, you know, almost 300 miles per hour and then kaboom, everything stops. It kind of just launches you forward in your seat. And it's not that I saw any fire or anything like that, but I could smell the fire. And I saw the safety safari getting my attention for me to pull over. So I was able to hop out and kind of see what was going on behind me. But, um, you know, you just check it off and add it to the list of uh, experiences during a rookie season. You're definitely collecting the experiences. Matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of your first, if not the first visit to the Motorplex. So what do you think of the facility? Yeah, I love the Texas Motorplex. This is my first time really here. And I think one of the most important things, one of the most significant things that stood out to me was the fans. And there was a ton of fans. And I think the facility did a great job of supporting those fans in a healthy and safe way. And on top of that, the fans were not just here, they were super engaging. So it was nice to be able to meet some new people. It was nice to be able to spend some time with some new fans. So overall, just a great experience. So man, look, you're out after round two here at the Fall Nationals, but getting past round one important, especially with what happened during qualifying. As a drag racing fan, I've got to ask, who do you think nabs this championship in top fuel? That's a great question. There's so many good drivers at the top, and somehow I just know it's going to come down to Vegas because it always does. And, uh, you know, it just seems like the favorite is always Steve Torrance. It's got to be. He's the defending champ, and he runs really good. And I love Steve. He's a close friend of mine. But my heart is telling me Doug Coletta. Nothing would make me happier than having done, Doug win the championship. I think it would be good for NHRA, but I think it would be really good for him. So I'm, I'm excited to watch. Dougie, Dougie, Dougie. 
Well, look, folks, that's Justin Ashley. I'm the Monday Morning Racer for Strutmasters.com. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. Before we take a look at the classes in particular and update you on points, a brief fan tip for you. Usually I'll mention a particular restaurant or some matter concerning the track to make your visit easier, but this time I want to mention a particular product. That product, Best of Texas Barbecue Sauce. Folks, I had never tried John Hell's sauce before the Fall Nationals. I had seen him sponsor Funny Car Chaos and seen videos with the name mentioned Best of Texas Barbecue. Wonder if it really was the Best of Texas Barbecue sauce. And folks, let me tell you, this stuff is good. I'm not being sponsored by John. I'm just plugging it in because I think it's that good. You need to try this sauce. Support a company that supports drag racing in a wide range. He was supporting several cars this past weekend at the Fall Nationals. He's going to be supporting several cars at the Spring Nationals, such as Terry Haddock, Cameron Ferre, the Leverage Racing Team, and Joey Haas. This sauce, folks, it's sweet, it's spicy, it's got a little bit of a kick. It is smooth, though. It's not too watery, it's not too thick. It is an awesome barbecue sauce. I'm going to put a link to the website. You can go check them out, Best of Texas Barbecue Sauce, purchase some sauce, and tell them Monday Morning Racer sent you. Again, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm just telling you it's that good. And I know my sauce. I've been around and tried a lot of barbecue this was good stuff. It very well may be the best of Texas barbecue sauce, period. session let's look at top fuel first and I want to make note I'm impressed by Leah Pruitt after her harrowing experience of the mid-track chassis breakup that she experienced at the Midwest Nats here she is she's back in the car she ran well she got past a round of competition and that helped ease the loss of points that she's experienced from not going on further at the Midwest Nats because Doug and Steve Along with Billy, they had longer days, the longest of the two being Billy and Steve, and Steve is your champion of the Fall Nationals at the Texas Motorplex. So here's the look of points right now in NHRA Top Fuel. Steve leads, second is Doug, 51 points behind, third is Leah, 148 points behind. There is still an opportunity for her to do something in this championship run with there still being a race in Houston and a race where you have points and a half at Las Vegas. So folks, right now it's a battle between Steve and Doug definitely and an outsider in Leah and Billy. But keep your eyes on Steve and Doug. It looks like it's going to come down to them with two races yet to go.
In Funny Car, it's still a battle of the Don Schumacher cars with no one in sight to catch them, and they win yet again, growing that streak of Don Schumacher Funny Car wins. The point situation is this. Matt Hagen is first. Jack Beckman is second, only four points behind. Note, he also picks up the first ever Funny Car Camping World NHRA win. I know that's important to him. Third is Tommy Johnson Jr., 77 points behind, and Ron Caps is in fourth. Effectively, we're looking at a three-way race for the championship between Matt, Jack, and Tommy Johnson Jr. In other Funny Car news, the drag racing community experienced a tragedy in the passing of Eric Lane. He was a co-crew chief on the Cruise Petragon Funny Car team and had become a well-known and well-respected, beloved member of the drag racing world in the NHRA. Sadly, he was struck by a vehicle and killed Monday night after the event in Ennis, coming from a restaurant on some R&R &R with his fellow teammates. Surviving is his wife and daughter. There is a GoFundMe set up to help during this tough time for the family. I've decided personally to donate my YouTube revenue from this pay period to this particular cause. Can you help? And if you can help, find that link in the description of this video and give whatever you can to help this family in an unexpected tragedy that has affected the entire drag racing community of the NHRA. Pro Stock had the rest of the Midwest Nationals concluded at the Fall Nationals at the Texas Motorplex. Remember, there was atrocious track conditions there at the Worldwide Technology Raceway for the low downforce cars. So they wrapped up the rest of the rounds, picking up midway of round two in qualifying. Erica Enders wins the Midwest Nationals at the Fall Nationals qualifying. For the Fall Nationals themselves, Matt Harford picks up a win, adding to the list of winners in 2020, and good to see someone else beyond Erica, Line or Jeggy. Speaking of Erica, Line and Jeggy, they're still leading the way in points. This is what points looks like in pro stock. Pro stock motorcycle, I am excited about this category. When you look at the points, it is so intriguing. So many people are in play and still have a shot with a race ahead and then a race that's points and a half. Remember, Pro Stock Motorcycle also had to finish up the race from the Midwest Nationals here at the Fall Nationals. Who won that? The Midwest Nationals in Texas, though? It was Matt Smith. Now, when we look at the Fall National event itself, there are some great points during qualifying as well. Coming again from the Matt Smith Racing Camp, Angie Smith, she is the first woman on a pro stock motorcycle bike to go over 200 miles per hour and only becomes the fifth member of the Denso 200 mile per hour club for the pro stock motorcycle riders. That is stellar. And that also makes it that three of those five spots, they are taken up by Matt Smith racing bikes. That's impressive and it speaks volumes to the work and effort that Matt Smith puts into his racing program with those bikes. The winner of the Fall Nationals in Texas is Jerry Seva. And when we look at points, again, quite a battle going on right now. Matt Smith, he leads the points in Pro Stock Motorcycle. Second, we have Scotty Polachek, 49 points behind. Behind Scotty is Andrew, 59 points behind. Angel Sampe sits fourth, 93 points behind, and fifth, is Eddie Krawick at 114 points behind. It does seem like right now in Pro Stock Motorcycle, the edge is with Matt Smith Racing, but we're not done. Keep your eye on this class. I think they have the best points battle of all the pro categories right now.
conclusion, the NHRA moves on to Baytown, Texas, the Houston Raceway Park for the Spring Nationals. Yes, the Spring Nationals in fall 2020. What a year. Strange things, folks. Also, I will not be there. I have a schedule conflict, so I'm going to be at the PDRA World Finals at Virginia Motorsports Park. Some great championship battles in Pro Boost and Pro Nitrous. And since the championship is sewed up in Extreme Pro Stock, many of them are going to be vying for to be the first Extreme Pro Stocker Mountain Motor Pro Stocker into the threes. They're looking to put a 399 or quicker on the board at Virginia Motorsports Park. And they're thinking conditions are going to be right because they're at the right track to do it. So folks, make sure you follow Monday Morning Racer on Twitter, like on Facebook. Remember, I've got the Instagram account as well. And subscribe right here on YouTube. And I'll keep you up to date wherever I go and follow drag racing and motorsports action. Until next time, folks, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal. Oh, <laughs>